Hey guys, thank you for watching. On this episode of Survival Unlimited, we're going to be practicing some basic survival skills. Now, we're not doing any tutorials, but we're basically just going to be collecting water, making a fire with a magnesium fire starter or whatever tinder we can find, and boiling water in a canteen cup. So let's go. Here we have a birch tree. Uh, the birch bark from a birch tree is highly flammable because um, it peels off, uh, first of all, so it's very easy to get and collect. But um, it's very flammable because it has oils in it that can catch fire um, very quickly, especially from a spark such as magnesium fire starter like we're using. Um, so uh, the bark from this will be uh, very good for um, our purposes in making the bird nest for the magnesium fire starter. So I've been walking along and I actually just found this. It appears to be a glass jar, but when you actually grab it, it's really just plastic. It's kind of a shame anywhere in the wilderness. Almost anywhere in the world you can still find human trash. But anyway, we can use this not we could use it for boiling water, but you'd have to be kinda of careful with it to only get the flames on the bottom. But we can also use this for just storing water in. This would definitely be great for carrying water on the go, even if it doesn't have a lid. So I'm gonna bring this back to camp with me. Hey guys, I'm just uh on my way to a small stream over here. Uh fill this up with uh some water to boil. There's actually a small, very thin, slushy sheet of ice over this pond. Well, I wouldn't say pond, small rain runoff stream. So, it's still cold even though it's spring. So I'll try to get as little mud in it as I can. Of course, there's really no way to avoid it. Alright, as you can see, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, little crap and dirt and stuff like that, but, you know, we'll probably just filter it through a bandana. That should get most of that out. Then we can, uh, boil it, and that should get rid of most of the thread of crispo, cryposporidium and giardia and stuff like that, so that'd be pretty good. So I'm processing through the um, birch bark, which will get really fine fibers, get all the oils into the fibers and everything, and that will be able to catch a spark from the um, magnesium fire starter a lot easier. Um, and it has very fine fibers and kind of flaky. Okay, so we're about to get this fire started. Now I have a magnesium fire starter here. I believe it's by Coleman. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, you can get the magnesium ones are a lot better than the regular ferro rods. First of all, 99% of ferro rods, you'll see they have the handle and the actual ferro coming out. They always break off. I've never had a fire a ferrocerium rod, ferro rods fire starter that isn't doesn't have a magnesium block that hasn't broken off. So the magnesium is really helpful because you can use the magnesium itself and it'll actually stay on until there's no more left. So let's see how long it'll take us. There goes there third go. strike. Now, you want to make sure that you get fire, flame on the full extent. And if you see this white smoke over here, that bright white, that's from moisture. But yeah, if you do it right, then you can quite easily get a flame with the magnesium fire starter. So now it's going to get some wood on top of it. And we're not too, too worried about keeping this fire lit. That's why we don't have too much preparation because we're really in it for the coals. But we're going to light what we have. Basically what we need is, once all of this dies down, and there's just a few burning embers, and mainly just hot coals, we're going to be able to use that, um, along with the canteen cup, and then that should be able to, um, boil the water. 
So now what I'm going to do is, uh, as you saw earlier, I carried the water over in the canteen cup, and um, it was quite filled with um, dirt and uh, other crap. So I put it into this, which is obviously not very clean either. But what I'm going to do is um, take this paper towel, which you could also use any um, cotton um, bandana or a portion of a shirt, and I'm going to use that to uh, see if I can get this to stay on. There, I'm going to use that to filter the water, and that should get some, most if not some of the uh, dirt out, and then it should go through. Okay, you know what, I'm going to take out a layer. Now the only problem with using paper towel as opposed to cotton is that the paper towel itself will absorb a lot more of the water. But as for, you can see here. But for these purposes, it should work. So it, as you can see, it'll, it almost stays there like a, uh, a small pool. And then it goes down, and you can actually hear it. And then see how it's leaving behind all the dirt. So now, obviously, there's still going to be small portions of the dirt that still go through and that were already in the canteen cup. But, you know, this is life. I'll move the coals around it and stuff. And um, the reason you want to uh, use, of course, now that I'm saying this, we're getting flame, but the reason you want to use coals instead of more direct flame is because when you use the direct flame, it will char the metal of the, um, of the canteen cup. So, I mean, I guess if you still get the same result, which is boiling water, but it just, I mean, I'm sure you can still use the canteen, but it just doesn't keep it quite as, uh, you know, clean and complete, top-notch working order. So I'm just moving all the smoldering little sticks, and I'll probably break them up so they'll be less of a flame. And then, technically, once the water is at a boil, it means that it's uh, purified. But I usually like to let it boil for about, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, just to kind of make sure. And you don't want to leave it too long, because that's all evaporating water that you lose. And also, it's okay to have a flame under it, but if it starts licking up the sides up to the point where it's getting to the top, then that's where it's going to start to burn the metal and make it really crappy, like Ben was talking about. Just make sure to keep it kind of like this. And we'll turn it back on when this gets to a boil. This starts to bubble. Now a good way to get the boiling to go faster is to add some heat inside. So we're gonna, what I already do is I put some pebbles in the fire. And they've been heating up in the coals. So here's one right here. And obviously it's hot, so I'm not going to pick it up with my bare hands. But here's the literally just drop it right in the fire. You hear it steam. So that's adding tons of heat. And that's going to really speed up the process. So I hit a couple more rocks in here. They're just little pebbles, so if I find them, I'll put those in too. Okay, so it got to a boil, but our camera ran and we had to grab a new battery. So it's since cooled down. As you can see, we have mostly all coals and ashes here. So now that it's cooled down, we're just going to take a drink. Now it's kind of hot, still you're going to have to wait. It usually takes upwards of <clears throat> 15 minutes to half an hour just for it to cool down. But, you know, right now it's drink a drinkable temperature, but it still kind of burns your lips a little bit. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll be back with more of these videos. This one was kind of short, but we're going to have longer ones. We're going to eventually, in the summer, we're going to have a sort of our own little mini-series, just um, 
one episode of us basically surviving through through from late afternoon through the night to the next morning. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you guys in the next episode. So this is just a little bit of a bonus scene, but today I'm going to teach you how to do a little bit of a whistle with just your hands. It's an effective whistle, it's a loud whistle, it's good for bird hunting, or bird watching even, and it's good to keep in contact without screaming like a banshee. So it basically makes the sound of a morning dove, you just take your hands, and what you're going to do is you're going to put them both flat, put your fingers together, and then with your right hand, you're going to put it where your knuckles meet your fingers like this. <clears throat> then you're going to bend your fingers into this little membrane of skin between your thumb and your pointer finger, just like this. Then you're going to bring your hands together, and you're going to bend your thumbs, and you're going to blow on these two knuckles, and it's going to make a nice, loud, resonating sound, which you can control just by moving your hand back and forth like this. So I'm just going to show you how to do it, and Ben will probably respond. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice loud sound. It sounds just like a morning dove. Here, this sounds almost exactly like a morning dove. And there's Ben making sort of a pigeon noise. Yeah, so it's really useful for signaling. You know, the, a universal stress signal is anything in freeze. So you just go. And then um. That's a good way to, do, or you just do SOS. But even though it's not necessarily um, something that I was going to put in this video, I just thought it'd be cool to put in. It's a really good thing to know. A lot of outdoors we know and a lot of survivors know it, so I just, you know, thought I'd say it. And you're going to have to practice for a little while. It's really hard to do it first, but it's really worth it in the end.